Hola, mi miembro de la familia. Mi nombre es Amara Odago. Son bienvenidos de nuevo a mi canal. And to my English subscribers, hello family members. My name is Amara Odago and you're welcome back to my channel. If you're joining me for the very first time or you're seeing my very face for the first time, I'm originally from Nigeria and I bring to you content based on how you can obtain your visas, immigration news and how you can live your best life right here in España. If you think you can relate to that kind of content, please do consider subscribing by pressing the red subscribe button down below, turn on your bell notifications so whenever I post you'll be the first to get notified, liking this video if you like my kind of content, sharing this content to other people who you think may need problem solving videos just like this. Also, leave me your suggestions of subsequent topics you'd like to see here on my channel or just your opinion on this said video. Do well to leave them in the comment section down below. Disclaimer, I am not an immigration lawyer, neither am I a recruiter. This video is brought to you from my personal research and experience. So do well to do your own research before you take that next step. Let's get straight into today's video. Most times I do videos on here based on the questions that I have gotten from my subscribers or prospective subscribers and today's video is because of that so some of my subscribers have reached out to me some of them who are diploma holders some who graduated with third class from their first degree and they just want to know whether Spanish universities accept diplomas and with their third class degree be able to lead them to assess a master's degree here in España now let's answer that I would like to say categorically that all universities in Spain do not accept diplomas but there are definitely some universities that accept diplomas so if you're a diploma student you have your OND, HND, you graduated, you have your certificate and transcript the good news for you is that you can actually use this to assess your master's degree here in España using some of the universities um, and polytechnicas that I'll be listing after now if you graduated from your university first degree with a third class certificate i've heard a lot of people who have reached out to me telling me they graduated with third class and they don't know what advice to give them should they do a second um, degree or should they go ahead and assess a master's degree using their third class certificate i want to say that the choice is yours if you will want to you know do another degree depends on you maybe the course you did before you do not like it in spain when you are here and you want to assess your master's degree it has to be related to what you studied before so except you have to do a bridging course um to in order for you to assess another field in your master's so if you think that maybe the course you did before you do not like it you want to change you want to switch then you can now start another degree here in spain but if it's something you like it's just that you the and um, the result is what you're not comfortable with you can still assess your master's degree using that result but not in every school so there are many european universities colleges and schools that accept hnd certificates second class degree certificates and third class degree certificates yes. here in europe so this video is opened up for europe it's not just i'm not specifically talking about spain which i usually do obtaining a higher degree in a foreign country is a fantastic accomplishment and it's a once in a lifetime opportunity as well yet yeah, their expenditures are typically rather exorbitant what if, on the other hand, you are able to get rid of the high cost, you locate the perfect location overseas where you'll be able to earn your master's degree in Europe with just a third class or a HND certificate while taking advantage of low tuition costs and overall low cost of living here? Would you like that? If you are considering enrolling in a master's program with a low GPA uh, or HND or third class, you would look into countries in the EU. So why am I even hyping, you know, all this? Why? What is the reason? Why, why should you come and study here in Europe? These are some of the advantages. A global perspective is highly valued. Companies of all sizes are on the lookout for workers 
who are willing to step out of their comfort zone. Investing in the future by studying in Europe is a smart move. Many European nations advertise attractive post-graduation employment opportunities to international students. That is why it is good, it's a good idea anytime, any day to study in Europe. You are more likely to get job offers and to be able to stay here for longer after studies. Europe is a home to numerous of the world's top educational institutions. Academics from across the world are working together in Europe to advance knowledge. Are you bothered about European countries not being English-speaking countries? Let's answer that question for you. Europe is the home to thousands of colleges and institutions. Each of them offer tens of thousands of English language courses from humanities to biological science, from the smallest of colleges to the largest of universities. There is a vast array of educational opportunities available for students today. Everyone can find what they are looking for. Yes. Now for the choice of universities. I would like to say some things here. Number one, if you are coming to study here in Europe and you would like to assess your master's degree in lower tuition, you should consider applying to government institutions. They are the ones that have um, lower tuition fees and they are the ones that if you are, you know, you are on a budget, you'll be able to assess this master's degree without breaking the bank. But there are other factors that you need to also consider. And number one is that if you're coming with the, if, you're, if you want to assess your master's using the government institutions here in, in Europe, there are documents that need to be presented. You need to have your transcripts of record, academic certificate, English proficiency if you're assessing that degree it's in English. If you're assessing in Spanish, maybe you know how to speak Spanish, you need to show a proficiency as well because they will not just admit you without this proficiency certificate. So you also need to bring motivational letter, your CV, and you also need to attach your international passport. These are the basics. There are some schools that request for more documents. Um, another thing is that if you do not apply on time, it's a deal breaker here because some of these universities, they have set time when they open programs for international students. One thing I would like to tell you about the government schools here in Europe is that it's highly competitive. And the spaces they have for the classes or the courses that you want to come and study are limited. So maybe they have like, you want to read biomechanics or bioinformatics whatever the case is and you have like 40 people they're going to take 40 people for that for that um, season some 25 some 30 some 35 as the case may be the highest i've seen so far is 50 and this 50 is very few um schools or courses that would allow this so you need to strike while the iron is hot in plain terms you need to act on time Number one. Number two, the admission for the school um, government institution is like it's not 100% sure like you're going to get this admission because there are several factors to consider. Number one, most schools here would consider your transcript of record in order to give admission. Your transcript relates to the course of study. So if the transcript does not relate to the course of study, they will have to like refer you to go and do bridging courses in order to assess their masters. Also, how is the transcript? What is the degree of the transcript? Is it a high transcript you got or not? And those people who have higher um, transcripts will be able to assess the masters more than you. So if there are more people who have very good transcript um, equivalence, they will be able to assess the masters more than you. Then number two, they will look at your experience after your degree. Do you have experiences relating to that master's that you want to study? If not, that would also... So there are percentages to these things. I want to believe that transcript has the highest percentage. Transcript, we have your experience. After experience, we have your proficiency. Proficiency is like 5% of what they are looking for. So 
you need to bring your proficiency but if you studied totally in english you bring an english proficiency waiver because you studied 100 percent in english then um you also need to bring a motivational letter which is like 10 percent of the total mark of what they are looking for so you need to write a motivational letter explaining to them why you want to pursue this masters what is your what motivated you what is your statement of purpose why you have to be able to convey it very well and be able to convince them that they will be making a good choice choosing you for this masters instead of the other person so all these things put together are things that they look out for when they want to give you admission so think very much about it you came late and you would like to assess master's degree as well you can do it in a private institution the thing about private institutions that is different from government institution is that they give you their own exam they set their own exam for you and it's really easy peasy you don't have any stress the only disadvantage is that it is more cost the cost is higher is more expensive and um, private universities do not really care about a lot of things the, the admission is guaranteed so if you want this course you apply for it you pay your reservation fee you're getting that course government institution that is not the case but of course it's understandable because there are a lot of people who want to enter into the government institutions anywhere they can cut costs that is where they are going to so this is why public universities in europe often charge much lower tuition fee than their counterparts in usa canada and australia um, no tuition is required to attend universities in various european countries there, there is a plethora of financial aid programs available to help international students pay for their education you shouldn't waste any opportunity to visit Europe and just the country in which you are studying the abundance of low-cost flights trains bus connections as well as relative short journey duration make this feasible even for students on a tight budget and with packed semester schedules so if you're in Europe, you know you have access to 27 countries. You can go there you're not even using flights. You can go there using the bus. Speed trains are here in one hour, 45 minutes, you're in the next destination. If you want to go to another country, it is possible for you to do this using flights. Flights that are very cheap here. Iberia is one of the flights that are really very cheap. Can travel and come back in a short period of time so this is one of the advantages of being in europe even if you're studying you can go on trips just going on different trips you can visit two or three countries even before you finish your one year master's program so this is a huge advantage for you and this cannot be gotten if you study in maybe say canada or uk you are tied to that country for the time being you will not be able to access any other country as you would in europe if you are a European citizen but plan to study in one of 26 countries that make up the European Schengen area, you can obtain a student visa quickly and easily. Imagine all the wonderful things you can learn and do, even distance from your university. Numerous universities offer bachelor's and master's degree in English, giving you access to tens of thousands of potential candidates the level of english proficiency is in most european countries is quite high that's why it's worth trying to acquire the rudiments of polish portuguese or swedish even if you know you probably end up using english in everyday life so no matter whether you are assessing the degree in english it is very important to learn the basics in whatever country you are going to if you are going to a spanish-speaking country please do well to learn the basics you'll be able to converse with your fellow um, spanish um, students you'll be able to you know live your day-to-day -day life and you'll be doing that in the language of the country so don't think that because you're studying in english you don't need to learn the language no even if you need this is what you're not interested in learning the language learn the basics and integrate better with the people this will take you further in this the whole experience you are here together now let's just move on to list of universities that accept hnd and third class degree certificate here in europe so it's a wide range of schools and institutions 
do well to pause this video and take them down if you want to but you do your research after that just to know what choice you're making and how it's going to favor you all right First university on the list is Universidad de Alicante. The Universidad de Alicante is in the province of Valencia. This is where I stay. Universidad de Geneva, Switzerland. Technische Universiteit Delphisch, Netherlands. Trinity College, Dublin, Ireland. Universidad Karlova, Czech Republic. Universidad de Lille, France. Politecnico de Milano, Italy. Universidad Politecnica de Madrid, Spain. Then we have U Sports Finland. Universidad de Paris, France. Universidad de Pekin, Norway. Universidad de Saudi Bongala, Italy. Universidad Politecnica de Valencia, Valencia, Spain. Universidad Bayern, Switzerland. Universidad de Sevilla in Spain as well. Universidad Pompeo Fabra, Spain. Universidad Autónoma de Barcelona, Spain. Universidad de Salamanca, Spain. Universidad de Murcia, Spain. Universidad Paris Saclis, France. Universidad de Politecnica de Catalunya, Spain. So these are some of the universities that you can assess your master's degree using your um, HND and third class. To do so. So guys, this brings to the end of my video. If you think you have questions you would like to ask, use the comment section. Let me get your feedback. Do you like topics like this or not? Let me know so that I'll know what to do going forward. Also remember, I work with authorized Spanish translators. In order to access your master's degree in any school, you need to translate your document directly to Spanish or you are applying for a study visa, you need to do this as well. So do well to use my services by clicking or using my details up on this video to request for your translation services I will be able to do that in 24 hours so time is not a worry and you're getting authorized Spanish translations thank you very much for watching and do well to binge on all of my content on this channel before you log out see you on my next video till then hasta luego